having done work on uh, women, on land and on the environment, it struck me that uh, we were dealing with exclusion of women. But uh, what was happening is that you would look at women as a homogeneous group, but actually you have uh, multiple exclusions. And in fact, our project title is Multiple Exclusions. Looking at how women are excluded as uh, citizens of countries in the global south. And then women uh, in the, the different countries being marginalized by national laws and policies. And then you have these communities uh, where you have people who are pastoralists and forest dwellers. Many of the communities actually uh, claiming the position of indigenous community but not recognized by the national governments. You know, my, uh, my background is really property and environment. And I've also studied gender. And uh, my frustration had always been that uh, when I got into women's uh, rights discussions, I had to almost uh, sanitize myself of all environment. So property and women, yes, but environment and women were really never considered together. Yet, in my research on land and environment, I saw such uh, close connections between uh, women, land and environment that I thought that if we just look at land, we are missing a lot of things. And especially when you're looking at communities that have very close connections with land, you look beyond the territory, you look beyond the surface of the soil. You're looking at what is embedded in uh, land. So when people say you're forest dwelling, you're saying in the forest isn't just about being sheltered by the trees. It is accessing resources that you get from the trees and also other things that you get from the forest, mushrooms, uh, some hand, whatever it is that uh, is in the forest that people access because they live there. So the difference is that we are looking beyond land to what comes with land. But many times when you do this kind of research and you come back, you're saying, but hang on, uh, when you look at these women, for them it's not about the right provided for in the law, it is about whether there's food on the table, so you have to link whatever policy and legal issues there are to very practical things on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, uh, you can't look at citizenship without land because uh, uh, when you talk about citizenship, it is a link of a person with some political terrain. And uh, sovereignty of nations is defined uh, through land. If there is no land, then you don't have a nation state. So on the one hand, at that higher level, uh, you can't talk about citizenship unless you have uh, defined land. But I actually have this uh, belief that uh, women's citizenship is very highly contested. Because you see, even as we talk about land and citizenship, the question is whether women really can use land to gain citizenship. And I have always thought that for women, it's looking for strategies to negotiate. Uh, maximizing the what they can take from the land.